The Metamorphosis by Franz Kafka, adapted by Peter Cooper, Section 3. A month had passed, yet Gregor's wound still seriously afflicted him. He could barely cross, crawl across his room, moving like some old invalid. This seemed to remind even his father that despite Gregor's pathetic condition, he was still a member of the family and not not to be treated as an enemy. Family duty required all of them to swallow their disgust and put up with him, simply put up with him. With this consideration, each day at dusk, the door was opened to allow Gregor to listen in on the family's conversations. Father? Shh, he's asleep. I wish father would remove his bank uniform after work. It's filthy. Bong, bong. Time once again. Come along, dear. What? Who? It's bedtime, father. Enough, I'm fine. So this is a piece of my old age. What a life this is. Besides Besides the father's bank messenger job, Greta had worked as a sales girl, and his mother stitched women's lingerie for a local store. So who in this overworked and exhausted family had time to worry about Gregor any more than was absolutely necessary? Greta, close that door. Yet most of the days and nights, Gregor hardly slept, haunted by the concerns for the household. Perhaps the next time they open the door, I'll take charge of the family's affairs again. But other times, Gregor was enraged at the wretched treatment he was receiving. Look at this filth everywhere. Greta calls this cleaning? Though the upkeep of Gregor's room was his sister's domain, one day his mother took it upon herself to do the chore. Mother? All this dampness is certain to irritate my body. Mother, I'm home from work and what are you doing in here? This is my task. But, sweetheart, you've been working so hard, I just... Father! Greta, please, shut the door. What? Who? You know Gregor's room is my job. Mine! Greta's right. You should never have gone in there. And you, you are never to clean it again. There's only one solution. You advertised for a cleaning woman? Yes. Later. So that's everything but this room. Well, what have we here? Just look at you, you old dung beetle. From that time on, much to Gregor's exasperation, this charwoman would crack open his door every morning and evening to get a peek at him. Look at our old dung beetle now. What's up, my old dung beetle? Come over here, you old dung beetle. Gregor grew so aggravated by these daily disturbances that early one morning as springtime neared, he turned on her as if to attack. Are you done then, you old dung beetle? By now, Gregor barely ate. When he happened to pass his food, he would occasionally take a bite but only for entertainment. He would hold it in his mouth for hours and then mostly spit it out again. At first, he thought he had lost his appetite due to, due to the distress over the state of his room. The family had gone into the habit of storing things that had, they no longer had space for. But actually, Gregor had quickly adjusted, though now there were plenty more items to contend with, since his parents had taken on three rumors. I hope she cooked the meat properly. Well, it's about time. Indeed, quite. Satisfactory. If only I had teeth. Look how they stuff themselves out there. While in here, I'm dying of starvation. Later. What's that? It's so beautiful. Violin? Indeed, quite. Is she disturbing you? On the contrary, join us out here. Though at one time Gregor would have remained hidden, consideration of others had been his greatest pride, 
Now he was not as ashamed to inch forward over the spotless floor. How sweet it sounds. Was he an animal that music could move him so deeply? If only I could catch her eye. He felt as though the way were opening to the unknown nourishment he craved. I'd asked her to bring the violin to my room and play only for me. And he knew that none of them could appreciate her playing as he would. She'll cry when I tell her how I had planned to send her to the music conservatory before this misfortune struck me. Mr. Samsa. Mr. Samsa, perhaps you'd care to explain. There's no problem, really. Please just return to your room. I declare herewith. In view of these appalling conditions, I give immediate notice. Twang. And I shan't pay a cent for the days I've been here. We too will depart of, at the end of this month. Slam. My dear parents, things can't go on like this. We've done everything humanly possible to care for it and put up with it. She, she's 100% right. Cuff, cuff. We must get rid of this notion that this, this monster is Gregor. If he could understand us. If this were Gregor, he'd have realized human beings couldn't live with such a creature and would have left voluntarily. But this animal persecutes us, drives our rumors away. The only solution is to get rid of him. Yeek! He's at it again! But Gregor had never intended to frighten anybody, most especially his sister. He only wanted to crawl back to his room. Granted, he did look peculiar in the attempt, but his good intentions seemed to be recognized. He was shocked by the distance and amazed that he had managed to traverse it in his condition. Slam! At last! Soon he discovered that he could no longer move. This didn't surprise him. It was more unnatural that he had ever been able to crawl on those scrawny little legs. And now what? Though he felt pains throughout his body, they grew fainter and fainter. Gregor thought of his family with tenderness and love, and with a certainty possible and with a certainty possibly stranger than his sisters, he knew he had to disappear. He lay in a state of empty and peaceful reflection until the clock tower struck 3 a.m. Bong. 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 Then without his consent, his head sank to the floor. Good morning, my old dung beetle. What's wrong? Are your feelings hurt, you old dung beetle? Now stop your faking, you old... Hey, come look. The old dung beetle's laying there, totally croaked. What? Who? Dead? D did you say dead? I'll say. Well, let us give thanks to God. Whew, I'll open the window. He looked so thin. He hadn't eaten in so long. Come, dear. Bah, well, where's breakfast? Shh. Quite disgusting, indeed. Get out of my house this instant. What do you mean? I mean what I said. So, so we'll be going. After all they had been through, the family needed a well-deserved rest, so they decided to take the day off and wrote letters of excuse to their employers. Well, I finished up in... And, and what? You don't have to worry about getting rid of that old thing. I've dispo disposed of the old dung bit. Enough! Humph. Well, I'm in a rush anyway. Slam. We'll fire her tonight. Come, come, now let's put all this worrying behind us and have some considerations for my feelings. Shall we? Then we'll move to a better situated apartment and... Almost sim simultaneously, it dawned on Mr. and Mrs. Samsa that in spite of all the recent sorrows, Greta had blossomed into a beautiful and voluptuous girl. 
And it was like a confirmation of their new dreams and good intentions when, at the journey's end, Greta was the first to rise and stretch her young body. That concludes the reading of The Metamorphosis by Franz Kafka, adapted by Peter Cooper. Thank you for listening.